Kings, I'll do chapter 7 and actually come back to the latter part of chapter 6 of 2 Kings to introduce this Sunday night message. I don't want to forget to say thank you, thank you, thank you for giving to missions with emphasis on church planting USA. I love global missions. The Great Commission is to reach the world, to reach the globe. But we have such a need in the United States. I just now told my wife, Sandra, for hundreds of churches like this, a good, solid Bible, didn't I say that, sweetheart? A good, solid Bible-preaching church where the truth is preached, has good, good, the right kind of music. And I, I must say that because we're living in a day and age when the contemporary praise and worship music has gone crazy, hasn't it? And just some good, solid Bible preaching, expository teaching and preaching straight from the Word of God. And that's the need of America. I'm for mega churches if they're the right kind, but you, you, I, I'd rather see just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new churches like this. Start from zero scratch in the last couple of decades. And we came to Arkansas and walked into Jonesboro, Arkansas, didn't know a soul, didn't have a prospect, not even a suspect and went door knocking door to door 12 years ago. 12 years, it doesn't seem possible, does it? 12 years ago, this church sent us consistently checks of love offering to support Church Planting USA. Isn't that great? You did, if you were here in Thailand at that time. You did. So God bless you. Exponentially just multiplies the rewards and blessings of church planting. And now we've started six churches there, five out of that one, the church I pastor and five more. And then we've assisted and helped on dozens and dozens of others. Uh, but uh, thank you, Brother Brooks and Mrs. Brooks and your family. And that little boy of yours in Denver, Colorado, has grown up to be a man's man. Where's he at? There he is, back there. Amen. Okay. And praise the Lord. Well, let me tell you how to find a wife if you're looking for a wife. Do I look like a man on a honeymoon? Do I look like I'm happy? You know how to find a wife? Go door to door so on. And I'm not lying. That's how it happened. Go door to door so on in cold turkey and then wait for over a year for someone to walk through the door as a first time visitor looking for this kind of church. There's a whole lot more story to it than that, Brother Brooks. But anyway, oh, my sweetheart Sandra down here. Um, she came into church and. Okay, I'm on, do I need to stay here so they can see it? Oh, I, I don't even have my mic. Give me that mic there, would you please? Amen. Sorry about that. Well, I've got to tell the truth if I'm on live stream. I, was, I, can't use, I can't use preacher illustrations. I'm just kidding. Amen. Testing one, two, three. Is it, is it right, right now? Testing one, two, three. So, uh, <laughs> what was I talking about? Found me a wife, door-to-door soul winning. Oh, Sandra was there in the second week that she came to visit. Uh, she was just looking for a Bible-preaching church. She wasn't looking for a husband, uh, but looking for a, a, the right kind of church. And, and lives about 20 minutes from the front door of our church. And second week there, I said something about my wife's funeral a couple of years ago. And the lady sitting next to Sandra went, there's your husband. <laughs> and uh, is it going through here too? Okay. And uh, so... She said, I'm not coming back if you're going to try to do that. She said, I'm not. She was serious, weren't she? She said, I'm not going back to that church. I'm not going back. But anyway, she went back. And look here, we're married. Amen. Woo. Amen. <laughs> oh, God is good. I'm not, I could just say a whole lot about that, but I won't. Let's preach the word of God tonight. Well, 2 Kings chapter number 7. Uh, I don't know your custom. If you're able to stand, let's stand for the reading of the word of God. And I don't know your custom. I don't want to break custom. Tell you what, let's go back to chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 25, 24. Finally find it here. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24. Now we see this great famine in Samaria. We're going to read about it. People run out of food. I mean, the town's starving to death. And, and King Joram blamed God and God's man uh, for the famine. Now, God's man didn't cause a famine, but uh, the king said it's God's man's fault. And um, then God's man's going to come to the next chapter and say, Tomorrow about this time, Right here in our city, 
All the food you need and unless your budget can afford. They said, there ain't no way. I don't believe it can happen. Now, let's go back to chapter 6, verse 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all of his hosts and went up and besieged their sea. How they're talking about a bad, mean, wicked dude. I mean, Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, somebody worse than Castro's Cuba or Gaddafi, uh, somebody, this guy is causing the famine. A great famine in Samaria. Behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four, four, four score pieces of silver, fourth part of a <coughs> cow of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? Now get ready. We're going to see where they're killing their kids and eating them. Cannibalism. The famine is, and y'all believe the word of God? Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's so bad that they're killing their kids and eating them. And so uh, these people are crying, help me. And verse 28, the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered and said, this woman said unto me, give thy son and we may eat him today and we'll eat my son tomorrow. So we boil my son, did eat him, and I did, uh, I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. Came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, God do so and more to, to also to me, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shapheth, shall stand on him this day. He said, well, let's kill the preacher. It's the preacher's fault. That's why we're in a financial bind, and that's why we're hungry. And so let's say, it's kill that man of God, Elisha. But Elisha sat in his house. The elders sat with him. The king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away mine head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? While he yet talked with him, behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What shall I wait for the Lord any longer? Then Elisha said, now here's our message. We're going to read a couple of verses and let you be seated and pray. Here's the preacher, the man of God, Elisha. And he said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria right here in our city, at the marketplace, at the, in, at the local Walmart, okay, at the entering of the gate, tomorrow, 24 hours from the day, even though you're killing your kids and eating them, all the food that you need at a price that your budget can afford. Verse 2, a Lord on whose hand, a, a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered and said, answered the man of God and said, now this Lord has a little ed, a little L, kind of like a security guard or the person guarding the city, you know, the one in charge of the gate. So here this little, as the Lord said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. The man of God said, Buddy, with your kind of faith, it's going to happen, and you're going to see it, but you're not going to get to eat. Are you with me what I'm saying? With your kind of faith, you're going to see it happen, but you're not going to get to enjoy the food. Verse 3, and here's our message. There were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. They said one to another, Why set we here until we die? I want to preach a message, and I didn't have the title of it until I was in the Walmart parking lot about an hour ago at your local Searcy. And I told my sweetheart, I said, here's what I'm going to preach tonight. Lessons from four lepers. Lessons from four lepers. Now, you may have heard this taught from or preached from before, but here we go tonight and see what message God has us on Sunday night. Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Lord, I love it, I love it, I love it. Like Brother Brooks said, nothing like Sunday night church family. Coming to church. There's no two services alike, no two weeks alike, no two messages alike. If I were to preach this message five times, there's no illustrations alike. And so, Holy Spirit of God, we ask you to lead us tonight. I pray that you might lead me to pass over points that don't need to be covered tonight and dwell on points, Holy Spirit of God, that need to be covered. You know the need of this crowd. 
And Lord, I've preached long enough and years enough to know that uh, nothing good could happen unless the Holy Spirit of God's right in the big middle of all of it, doing it. So we ask you to meet with us tonight. I thank you for our good friend, Brother Brooks, his wife, his family, this church, these dear laymen. I thank you, Lord, that you've answered prayer. And Brother Brooks is uh, uh, recovering from his recent setback on his health. And Lord, I pray for longevity of life and health and stamina and energy. And Lord, he can just keep on keeping on for many, many decades, more years. And thank you, Lord, for meeting with us by faith. We're going, we believe you're going to meet with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you and be seated, please. Go back to chapter 6 again, please. In 2 Kings chapter 6, we see the greatest famine in this part of the Bible that you can read about. Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was causing the famine. The people had totally run out of food. I mean, uh, a, 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 a city that's starving to death. The enemy had seized the marketplace. They'd taken all the gold, they'd taken all the silver, they'd taken all the food, taken it right over the mountain and put it in their tent. We're going to read that in a moment. King Joram blamed God and blamed God's man, Elisha, for famine. Let me say that this is not the message. I didn't plan to bring the point out, but we don't need to blame the pastor, the man of God, for the problems you have. Amen. Can I say that again? Brother Brooks didn't pay me to say this. Amen. And I didn't plan to say this, and it's not in my outline. I don't even have an outline except what's scratched in the column. But why in the world do we want to pray, blame God uh, for the problems you're having or blame God's man for the problems you're having? But this is what happened. Chapter 7, Elisha predicts good wheat, good barley, flour, uh, at a price in Samaria, uh, 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 one measure of flour for a, sh uh, 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 a shekel of flour, two barleys uh, uh, a shekel, in the gate in the marketplace people didn't believe it they didn't believe God's man they didn't believe Elisha and the ones that didn't believe it died now look with me right outside the starving city of Samaria right here it is four starving lepers in the gate what do they say why set we here until we die now let's do a little Bible study here for maybe five minutes here and uh, that's what we call expository preaching uh, sometimes. And let's do this on this Sunday night. Um, I'm sure your pastor sometime through the years has covered this perhaps. But let's take it tonight and see what the Holy Spirit has for us. Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat. Verse 3. There were four lepers men at the entering of the gate. They said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we'll enter into the city, then the famine's in the city and we'll die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us fall into the hosts of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, <laughs> we shall but die. I'd rather die with a full tummy than an empty tummy. They say we're dead if we stay here. We're dead if we go there. And if we go there and if they do kill us, at least we can get a full stomach before we die. Are you with me what they're saying? Why sit we here? Why just sit here and die? No, they're not doing anything about it. We know where the food is. We know where the gold is. We know where the silver is. We know where the enemies camp. They're just right over, and we're going to find out later. They got over there and got back by daylight. So it's not far over the mountain. You see, just miles over the mountain. Be as close as from Cersei to Ball Knob or whatever. Just close. They rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. When they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Now, I want you to underline the word twilight in verse 5 or color code it or circle it or just make a check or if you don't write in your Bible, just to kind of make a notation of twilight. I want you to look up in verse 7 and see if you see the word twilight. Verse twilight, uh, verse 5, twilight. Verse 7, twilight. Now, here's what I want to preach to you. The very minute you step out by faith, God starts working on the other end of the deal. The very minute we take that step of faith, God, not until we take that faith, step of faith, does God start working on the other end of the situation. I could, that's not the message, but I could apply that in many ways tonight. They rose in the twilight, going to the camp of Syria. When they came to the other most part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. Now, there's no chariots. God calls them in a miraculous way to hear. They thought, wow, listen, the chariots. There's no chariots. God did that and the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. They said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the... 
they said, I know what happened. This king of Israel got that bunch of Hittites and that bunch of Egyptians, and they're framing up against us. That's what's happened. The king of Israel hath hired against us king of the Hittites, king of the Egyptians, to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the... Let's do it again. They arose and fled in the... Oh, when did the lepers step out by faith in the... And when did God cause them, spook them out of town, and they run out of town and left the food on the table to go in the... Well, I'll say. Left their tents and their horses and their asses as it was and fled for their life. Why are they running? They heard all these chariots. No, there's no chariots. It's a miracle. They heard all the horses coming. No, no horses. They just heard it. And uh, when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. Uh, came again, entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Now, there's an all-you-can-eat buffet place here in Searcy. I've stopped at it. It's called, what is it, Western Sizzling? Is there one? And there used to be a, a is there another one across the interstate of all-you-can-eat? Ryan's. I used to stop at Ryan's. What's around here now, Western Sizzling? I want you to pr pr pretend like you're hungry, you're starving. And you go into Western Sizzling, you pay, well, you, you, somebody gives you a meal, let's say. And you go get you all you can eat off of this, uh, start to say dessert bar. Some people go to dessert bar first, but the salad bar. Then you get the food bar. You go back for another plate of food, go back for another plate of food, and go back for the dessert, and go back for the second dessert. And when you get us the second dessert, why are you smiling back there? You like to do that, don't you? Amen. And then you get you some cookies and get you some ice cream. And you sit there and you roll your tummy and say, Oh, I don't need one, but I'm going to get two more cookies and get some ice cream. You're all smiling like you like to do that. That's what these lepers did. They starved. They starved. All the food that they needed, they ate and they ate and they ate. And then all the gold and silver, and they went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go tell the king's household. And I want to say to you folk that we do not well. We know where the watering trough is right here. Right there. The man of God preaching the word of God. Amen. We know where the truth is. And for a lost and dying world, the decent thing to do is help keep somebody out of hell. The decent thing to do is go tell them about Jesus. It's a decent thing to pass out a track. We do not well. This is the day of good tidings. We have all we need. You feed your dogs and cats better than some people feed their kids. Could I get an amen? I throw more food down the garbage disposal then some people have to eat. Am I right about that? This is a day of good tidings. Now, some of you like to take notes, so I wrote this down. I want to give you lessons from the... Le oh, that's all introduction, by the way. Y'all okay with that? Huh? Number one, when I step out by faith, God is working on the other end of the situation. I've already said that, but I want to make a point if you're taking notes. When I step out by faith, God starts working on the other end of the situation. I have to announce it first. I don't mean to say I'm going to. I have to make a public commitment. What's the Holy Spirit telling you now? Maybe God wants you involved in pastor the counsel from the pastor but Sunday school teacher soul winning door knocking witnessing <coughs> nursing home ministry whatever just fill in the blank I don't know what using your talent for the Lord seeking counsel from the pastor on how he could how but what have you not see you must announce you must surrender I don't say you have to walk the aisle and get in the altar and surrender like you're going to be a missionary in a foreign country but I do believe laymen should surrender I believe laymen should submit their talent to the Lord. And so I wrote this down. 
When I step out by faith, God's working on the other end of the deal. And secondly, God controls all the food and silver and gold. Let me tell you, you may have a bill due this week. You may have a car broke down. You may have a burden. All of us. Hey, join the crowd. Paint yourself. We're all there. We all have burdens. If it's not health, it's money. If it's not money, it's finances. If it's not finances, it's a broken relationship with a relative or somebody. Um, a problem. In, we all have burdens. That's, joint, uh, that's the world in which we live. God controls the food. He controls the silver. He controls the gold. I know that sounds awful blunt, but that's the way it is. Well, I'll tell you what. If I don't have $500 by Tuesday, I'm sunk. If I don't have $5,000 by the end of, uh, end of this month, I'm just going to lose. Join the crowd. That's it. I mean, it's, you know, maybe $500, $5,000, or $25, or $25,000. I don't know. But God is the one that controls the food and shelter and clothing and happiness and health and and the gold and the silver right here. God does. And see, so I wrote this down. If I don't go and tell others where the food is, some mischief will come upon me. What causes church splits and church confusion and fussing and fighting and only by pride cometh contention? What causes mischief? The fact that people do not go and tell others about Jesus. Can I get an amen right there? Folks, we're, we're not doing well. If we know the plan of salvation, if we know how to help keep someone out of hell, why don't we tell them? Your neighbor, your friend, your relative. Why don't we? I'm not a soul winner like I should be, but oh, God knows through the years, wow, we've tried to stay at it consistently, Brother Brooks, for 12 years. Every week, every Thursday, every Saturday, and when I say every, about 47 Sundays out, 47 weeks out of 52, there's always snow and ice and rain and uh, revival week and whatever. But uh, at least 46, 47 weeks out, we're we're out there, uh, door to door, cold turkey visitation, soul winning. And I, I wasn't joking a while ago. That's how God gave me a wife. Amen. That's not why I went out there, but that, that's a bonus blessing right there. So. I wrote that down. If I don't go tell others where the food is, mischief will come upon me. Now, chapter 7, verse 1, look at that again. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. The darkest hour is right before the dawn. The darkest hour is right before the dawn. Hold on, my child, joy comes in the morning. The darkest hour means dawn is just in sight. I didn't plan that. It just came out. I don't know if I've sung that reason. But that is. Have you knelt beside the rubble of an aching, broken heart? And the things of this life fell apart? You're not the first to be acquainted with sorrow, grief, and pain. For the master promises sunshine after rain. Hold on, my child, joy comes in the morning. Your weeping only lasts for the night. Hold on, my child, joy comes in the morning. The darkest hour means dawn is just in sight. I'm telling you, you may be there tonight. You've tied a knot in the rope, and the knot's slipping, and you can't. You think it's all over. But I've a deer hunted enough. I've been out there in the woods for hundreds of days of my life, and I know the coldest time is right before daylight, and the darkest time is right before daylight. And it, that's literal if you've been out there deer hunting before. And the darkest hour, you say, I'm at the bottom. There's no way I'll make it through the week. Oh, great. You're just about ready. They're just about there. The darkest hours before the dawn. Let's go tell them before twilight. So, verse 11, chapter 7, verse 11. Say, if you're there, say amen. We're about half finished or more for those of you that are streaming back there. He called the porters. <laughs> now, this is security police, <laughs> porters, and told it to the king's house within. And the king, this is King Joram, the king 
arose in the night and said to his servants, I'll now show you, I'll now sh I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know we be hungry. Therefore, <laughs> are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of the servants answered and said, now let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of Israel. In other words, the horses are starving to death. The animals are starving to death. So just take five of them and go let, let us send them. And they took, therefore, two chariot horses. They didn't get the horses. They got two chariot horses. The king sent after the host of Syrians, go and see. Now, get the picture here. We're talking about the, the four lepers going back over the mountain to tell them before daylight, hey, security guard, police, tell the king we know where the food is. Tell the king we found all the gold and all the silver and all the food. It's right over the mountain. Go for it. The king said, I don't believe it. It's a frame up. The king said, I can tell you, I'll now show you what the Syrians have done, verse 12. He said, they framed up against us. They left the tents open, and they're out there waiting to, uh, for us to come in, and then they're going to kill us. So they took these two chariot horses and went over to check it out, and all the way was full of garments. Let's read verse 15. Can we read verse 15 again? Or y'all or together, I mean, it's verse 15. If you're there, read it together. And they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste, and the messengers returned and told the king, and they're running so fast, here's, here's that, and here, they're just closing all over the place, and, and uh, they, they just, I mean, they were really trying to get out of town in a hurry, and they lost it all. And so, it, let, me, let me read it again. All the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king, the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. Now get ready. They're about to get all the food they need. They're about to get their gold and silver back. Are you with me? So a measure of fine flour was sold in this for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord, uh-oh, uh-oh, little L. Who's this guy? Now, I don't know who's here, Brother Rick, and I may get on toes here, so I, I, this is dangerous when you come in another man's pulpit. I'm going to use an illustration. This is the deacon sitting back there ushering people in and don't believe that you're going to make it. <laughs> kind of quiet. I don't know of any church, okay? This is the person that says, Preacher, I don't believe we're going to make it. I don't believe it's going to make it. So the king appointed the Lord... Now, that verse 1 was this Lord, uh, verse 2, then a Lord of whose hand the king leaned said, I don't believe it. So the king appointed the same guy on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. The people trod upon him at the gate and died as the man of God had said. Guess what? He didn't get any of the food. They run over him. <laughs> they killed him. The rest of them got food. They run over the guy that didn't have faith to believe it's going to happen. As the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, measure of flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows of heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt say with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. So it fell, upon, out, so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate. By summary, I want you to see tonight, I want you to see, and I wrote down three things here if I can find it. Food in the midst of famine, life in the midst of death, and peace in the midst of war. Food in the midst of famine, life in the midst of death, and peace in the midst of war. We see the famine of Samaria, the faith of the lepers, the fullness of the people. Folk. This is a day of good tidings. Let me summarize with one verse and I'll be finished. This is a day of good tidings. Verse 9, chapter 7, verse 9. This day is a day of good tidings. We hold our peace. If we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. I'll tell you 
why we have problems in our churches today across America. We're not grateful for the spiritual food that we have. And we're not telling others where to find it. I think that's it. Missions, church planting, soul winning, witnessing, Sunday school, bus routes, junior church, vacation Bible school. We're not telling others. I mean, listen, if we go tell them, it'll help their marriage. It'll help their kids. It'll help their home. Could you all agree with that? Yeah. It'll just help. Some mischief will come upon us. <clears throat> Therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. Thank you, Lord, again for this Sunday night together. A familiar story to a few people. Maybe a new story to a few people. But thank you for the faith of those four lepers. What an encouragement it is. Why set we here until we die? Thank you that they stepped out by faith found the food. And I pray tonight that as a result of this we might be under conviction to get a fist full of tracks and chase sinners for Jesus. Just have a good time. Maybe next time we walk across the Walmart parking lot just pass a track out to someone. Next time we go into a restaurant pass a track out. And some will choose to go witnessing, and visiting, visitation, door to door soul winning. Thank you for those that already have done it. We know this church has people with that conviction already. And I pray we do more to tell others about you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together for the invitation. God's man will come in just a moment. He knows how to conduct the invitation. But let me challenge you to use this altar tonight if God's laid any decision upon your heart. And let me challenge you, whether you make this a soul winning message or just a message of faith or maybe stepping out by faith or maybe surrendering, why don't you do tonight what the Holy Spirit of God has told you to do and step out by faith? Well, it's family night. We've heard a message from the Bible. The Holy Spirit worked in some hearts, so I always look at it this way. The Holy Spirit speaking, that's just a really good time to get on the altar and lay your heart out to God right then. Because if you wait, you'll finally get comfortable about it. And right now would be a good time to say, hey, you know, I believe I, believe I could give somebody a track. I believe I could invite somebody to church. I believe I could tell somebody how I got saved. And they get saved the same way. Why don't you come? You never know.